Hello friends. In this video presentation, I'm going to show you how you can make use of flame sensor. Well, you will find there are a lot of videos available which will be making use of flame sensor. But my target is not just to activate my flame sensor, but at the same time, the moment a flame sensor gets detected, the value I want to push it into thing speak so that later on I can manipulate, I can figure out how often or what particular time interval the flame actually took place. Okay. So that's what my perception is. So once the detection of flame takes place, I have to push a numeric value or whatever value you feel like into things speak. So for that reason, I've already created a channel over here. So let me just refresh the channel once and you find that there is no value present over here, right? And here I have to pass the data once there is a flame detected. So what are the initial setup I have done? Over here you have got a flame sensor. Here is my node MCU. Currently the LED is blinking. So as long as everything is calm, the LED will blink. But the moment the flame sensor detects a flame, the LED will be switched off. And at the same time, a value will be pushed into my channel. So that's what we are going to do. And for that reason, this initial code I have made use of. So now let me uh, execute the code. And prior to execution, let me share you what I have written in the code section. So these, these are the Wi-Fi credential which I have got. I have connected the LED at pin number D1. And uh, here I have made use of the flame sensor at the uh, analog pin A0 since of the node MCU. And I have detected, I have created one variable called flame detected, which will hold the value once the flame is generated. And it, al it also will hold the value when the flame is not there. And I have created one threshold value of 200. Obviously, when the flame is not there, then it will be much higher than that. It will be around 1000 and above. But the moment the fire is detected, the threshold value will come down. And this drift in the value, we will detect that flame has actually taken place. So here I have invoked the Wi-Fi client for my node MCU. And uh, the initial configuration for the Wi-Fi settings has to be done. When uh, we will detect that the uh, Wi-Fi is connected or not, once it is connected, <coughs> sorry, once it is connected, I will activate my LED pin uh, for displaying the output. Right now, you can see right over here, and I will be using the flame sensor from the pin number A0 as the input. Okay, that was the initial setup. Now let's come to the loop segment. So in the loop segment, we have to connect to our ThingSpeak uh, server. So the server IP, the uh, server name I have given over here. And that will be converted to the IP address. And this is the HTTP port, which I will be using. So analog read is a function that will be used to read the uh, flame sensor value. And once the value is read over here, it will come to this particular variable. So at the normal state, the value which will be uh, detected or which will be stored in this variable will be much higher than the threshold value which are specified right over here. And then it will show the message that the flame is not there. Everything is calm and relaxed. Okay, that message will be displayed and the LED will be high. But the moment when the flame is detected, the threshold value will come down drastically. And then when this else part is going to work, and here what we have done is we'll display the message uh, along with that the play threshold value, we will see what the threshold value is. It's, it's actually below 200 even. And we will uh, reserve the LED button and hence the button will not be so, will not be glowing. And uh, the API key I have specified over here. Make sure every channel has got its own API key. You have to put that in a variable and then you have to go for concatenation. And in this concatenation, you're passing the field one. That means the respective field where the value will be pushed. I'm talking about this particular uh, field, okay, where the value will be inserted. And right now, I'm passing a steady value of uh, just a static value of three. Uh, it's up, up to you to change the value as of your choice goes. And then I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping up with a carriage return and some new line escape sequence. Okay. And this whole variable I have to push into my uh, thing speak channel. And for that reason, the initial setup is, has been done over here. And whenever you upload some data in the thing speak, you have to give a delay of 15 seconds because you are using a, a free channel. So naturally, there has to be some kind of limitation. Okay, and once the time span gets elapsed, then again it will be 
uh, starting executing okay so that's how the thing is going to work so let me now switch on my serial monitor before i start activating the program and here is my serial monitor it's saying that uh, the flame is not there so uh, let me run the let me upload the code once again and uh, we will see from the scratch how the thing is actually looking like so we put both the uh, screen side by side so that it's visible to you and here it is okay initially some uploading is taking place and you can see the led is now off because the code is getting uploaded right over here so once the code is uploaded the wi-fi setting has to be done that will we will see right over here and once the wi-fi setting is done the led will be on because that's what i have mentioned as a default when flame is not there the led should be on and the moment when the flame is detected the led should turn off and here the led is on and is saying see the threshold values keeps on changing okay so at time it begins uh, 1010 1011 so everything is fine okay so things are going pretty nice and uh, the channel is also having no value at all so that is also really good good to go so now what i will do is that i will push the data in my channel so for that reason i have to minimize this as well okay and let me minimize let me okay and let me minimize this as well and okay so what i will do is that i put the thing over here and i put this thing right over here okay so <laughs> this takes okay so uh, i'm keeping it right over here yeah fine okay so let's start the execution huh? okay so what i will do is that i need a lighter yeah i got a lighter and i bring my hand over here and let me and you will find that right over here there is an onboard led will switch on okay ah this got on and if i move up here he is saying that the threshold value is 76 and flame is detected so it's waiting for a while so once it gets oh here the value came oh my god here the value came and right now it's 5 30 in the morning and see the led was off the led was off and again the data started popping up okay so let me keep it over here then we can see it right so let me start once again huh the everything is now normal and uh, there is a value over here and it got generated at 5 43 in the morning so it's at the time when i'm working on this project okay so even when there is no flame the led will be on and uh, the onboard led of the flame sensor is also going to be off and uh, it is saying that the threshold value is right now 1010 and now let's go and fire it once again and here you see the onboard led is on see onboard led is on and the message is 75 and the flame is detected and let's wait a new value should pop up over here oh here it came that's really nice okay so that was what i was trying to achieve later on even if you switch off the application nothing to worry because from here you can figure out when was the fire that got actually triggered okay just triggering the fire won't do the whole stuff you also need to preserve some data about when it actually took place so that later on you can go for some manipulation so that's all from this video presentation i hope you liked it uh, definitely you share your view in this regard and in my next video we will deal with some further topic until then have a nice time thank you